Vian. So good to see you, my friend. Uh, I'm in Malaysia and Vian is in South Africa. Okay, Vian is a very close friend. He's traveled with me and Jenny, his wife, uh, Riet, with me and Jenny numerous times for the last few years and we've become such close friends even though we don't live close to each other we he lives close to johannesburg and i live close to cape town now vian is a pastor of a church for approximately 15 years now he was a businessman first and then uh, cut his teeth on that on business and then i think that equipped him so well as well to be a good pastor of other people people of other professions and now he is in a church uh, of a, a church which I want to explain like um, a church with real impact. Uh, they, they talk about uh, living water and this is what they are for the community, for other churches. All kinds of denominations come to them to learn from them. And they are so keen to teach anyone and not sheep steal, but teach other empower leaders of other churches also to train their people in the right way. So Vian has had great impact not only in the church, but through the church as well, into the community in different spheres as well, schools and, and uh, prisons and other, other places in the community. So Vian, uh, great to have you here. Uh, your invitation is so that you can tell us uh, a, a little bit on how you implemented the training of the World Needs a Father and the result of that in your church. So to encourage these fathers, pastors, leaders here, that they would do the same. So uh, we would love to listen to your model, how you are doing it, and what you see as the fruit of doing this in your church. Really keen to listen to you, Via. Over to you. Hi, everyone. So a lot of privilege to speak to you this morning. Um, to me, it's still morning, it's still dark. It's 5 a.m. in the morning. Just had my first coffee just to wake up. So, um, yes, I hope I look like someone that is awake. So, um, yes, let me, let me start off by, by addressing what I believe every single pastor experiences when it comes to new uh, and mostly courses in churches. You see so many times people come around and they want to market a new thing. They want to bring a new thing. And, uh, and you ask, is this one of those courses again that I have to put my people through what's in it for the other people uh, what will it do for my church and we are so so tired of just more and more courses in churches just more programs so obviously when we started this was this was 2011 we actually needed someone to speak on one of our conferences so we wanted to do a family conference a four-day thing and somewhere along the lines, I heard about Cassie Carstens and I said, okay, maybe this guy should be the guy to speak to our families and our men and our women. And uh, so, which I did, I contacted him. And when I sat with him that day, first time that we met, I said to him, Cassie, so would you speak at our conference? And he said, you know what, I will, I will probably do that, but I am not a conference speaker. So what I will do is I will come to speak at your conference, but then there's a deal, there's a transaction. I come in March, I speak, and you invite me back in August, and we do what we call a master mentor training for the World Needs a Father at your church. I said, so what is this? He said, you will see. So it turned out that he came to do the, the conference, be the keynote speaker on our conference. And uh, that same year in August, he came, he came to us, and we did the first master mentor training in our country, and I probably the first or the second one in the world. And uh, he invited 53 leaders from all over the country. And we went through an intense uh, three days, his first presentation of this material. So I sat there with all the questions in my heart. Is this a program? What's this? What, what does this guy want from us? And at the end of three days, I just knew one thing. This is not another program. This is a lifestyle. This is a culture changer that will literally shake the foundations of our church, but also our community. And, and what's more, it shook the foundations of my heart. I sat there and I just knew I have a problem. I will never, ever be able to get away from this again. This is, this is, this is going to literally consume me as a pastor and as a leader in the area. So, so I want to start from that, that space, saying I had, I had this thing in my heart of, is this another program? I was answered within three days, this is not. 
and that's why with with passion i jumped into this and say let's let's do this in our community so uh, my church is known as the river of life family church so obviously foundationally we love family we want to be a family a church family but also we zoom in very much on families to say um, to, to focus in on all the roles in the family and make sure that family the family unit is strong so that we can have church and we have a, a voice as church because we have a story to tell in family so the way we do this and the way we address this is literally with the world it's a father so where did we start in 2011 i think cassie left that august and within three weeks after the training we were 12 leaders and we said let's take what we've heard because i had 12 leaders from my own church attending and uh, let's take what we heard and let's see what we believe this is let's see what we feel so we sat around the table in a circle, a round table, three hours at a time, uh, Saturday mornings for three months. This is what we did. We put on the PowerPoint, and it wasn't as well refined as now. It was just a lot of slides. I mean, Cassie was still finding his feet on this, but I mean, the content was so excellent. We sat with this, and we just had con um, uh, discussions on this. After three months, we made sure that the 12 of us knew every single slide. We knew what we thought about it. We knew what we thought was true about this. And then we say, because we now know it, we tried to test this already in our families in three months. What should, what should the next step be? And then we said, so the following year, we're going to start groups in the church. And what we want to do is we want to take our slots per week and see if we can start a conversation in our community once a week, one hour in the morning. So we start at five o'clock in the morning, five 5 to 6 a.m. We created six groups with, with 12 leaders, so two, two leaders per group. We invited 20 people per group, and we sat all over the church on a Friday morning, and we did this for a full year, just having a conversation every morning about the content with, with 120 men. So what happened is, after the, after the year, obviously, we went through all the content, different people the next year the demand was so big that these groups just grew we actually didn't have enough space for the sixth group in the church anymore but we did that so what happened is people in our own church invited people from other churches and we literally represented churches all over our community the following year and we spend the time we spend time an hour per week with all these guys for a full year again a very, very interesting thing happened. So, you know now as a, as a church leader, if someone of the other church visits your church, the pastor of the other church starts to ask questions. Why is my member at the other church? What is he or she doing there? And will they ever come back? So, what they found is by the year three, we did not win over one single member to our church. We've sent every single person back to their own churches. And what happened in year three, Groups all over our city, eight different churches in year three, started groups in the morning or different time slots, but one hour per week. And soon we just had a, a momentum going in our, in, in, our, in our city of churches just representing this conversation, this life-changing content, this culture changer in their own midst. And uh, the first thing I saw is, obviously, a massive change in the hearts of our own congregation, the men, the fathers. Secondly, uh, a, very, a, very, a very strong flow of believers all over the city coming together in a, in a unified, in a one focus type of movement, having the same conversation, standing next to sports fields, chatting about the same thing. It started a new conversation in the city. So very soon... Wherever you go, someone would know about the world. It's a father, of course, they were talking about this. But I think the most astonishing thing was that all of a sudden, walls between churches came down. Pastors, reverends, priests, whatever, started phoning. And we started having meetings all over our city, actually three cities in our area. And we could talk about this foundational thing about families. We could talk about a modern-day type of discipleship within the family without being scared of each other. Because by then they knew we would do this, we would spend time, but we send people back to work in their own churches and in their own communities. And that was a win for our community. And I can say now, 
So that was 2011. Till this day, we are friends in the community. We we visit churches. Actually, from that group of people, the pastors of our church come to our church every Wednesday for an hour. And there is no, there's just no holding back. They come and we open, we are friends. And the world needs a father, it's just always a topic. So what happened with us is we we really went into this heart the first three years. And in year four, the mother design was well formulated and strong, which is now the, the woman's side of the world needs a father, the supporting role of the mother. And my wife was in this. She started doing this. So at our church, we then decided we will do the following. So we will still do our hour slots of the world needs a father, but we very much focus on weekend trainings as well, where we will do a training Friday night, full Saturday, and then Sunday after church for three or four hours. We did this once a term, and we did many of these at other churches. But what we started doing is to really focus on, on empowering couples, the, the unit as husband and wife. So, so yeah, that was, a, that was an amazing thing. Because the following year, we started seeing the, the, um, certain things in our community, in our church community, that literally blew our minds. Of course, my wife is also the facilitator of our uh, counseling department at our church. And, and at our center, we, we don't just counsel our own people. We counsel quite wide in our community. But we do have a very, um, very detailed record-keeping system because of legal matters in our country. So we know exactly who we counseled, when we did it, why we did it, and what was the focus. So we started saying at our church, so if you need family counseling, you have to do the World Teacher Father. You have to enroll in a one-hour sit-down per week. As, a, as the husband, and the wife needs to do exactly the same. If you cannot make the one hour, you have to do at least a full weekend of training. And after that, if you still have questions in terms of your family, you need specialized counseling, we will enroll you in our system and we will help you. We started doing that. It ran the full of 214, 215, 216. By the beginning of 219, the one day we sat and we had a discussion, myself and Riet, we looked at our, all our files because what we would do is at the end of a year, we take all the one year's family um, counseling, put it in one file, put it away and start the new year. We looked at the files and I just said to Riet, look at that. She said, what are you seeing? And I said, look at the amount of counseling in 2014 and look at the file in 2018 do you see what I see? So we did the calculation and we had a drop of 75% in family counseling in us in us in our community from 2014 to 2019, just because of one reason. Literally more than 90% of our congregation did the training of the World Teacher Father and a mother design. They did it in groups as if it is a discipleship model. It became the foundational thing of our church. And it literally saved the families. It saved marriages. By now, I cannot tell you how many marriages have been saved through this type of counseling. So, so what we now say is corporate counseling is much better than individual counseling. And the best way to do corporate counseling is if your content is right and it's focused. So for us, the World Needs a Father became this thing that we literally use as corporate counseling. And then when people would come into my office, I would have a World Pizza Father manual. And the journey that I take through that with their counseling will literally be starting at the, the wounds. We have a questionnaire on the wounds. And then journey through the discipleship journey with them. And time and again, we see the change. We see the win. And, and this is what we do. So by now, years later, 2022, I want to say to you, starting as a skeptic pastor with this, Checking it out, wondering what this will be. I'm totally sold out, not just me, my colleague, our congregation. This is what we do. This has become foundational to the World Teacher Father. More than that, I think we became like a hub or a host of the World Teacher Father and Mother Design in our, in our country, maybe. Uh, we play a big role. And never once do I have to convince a church board or anybody that this is the thing they would always convince me saying, do not stop, do not stop. This is what, this is who we are, not what we do. This is who we are. So do I need to say more? I believe I've said enough. 
as a pastor to pastors, this has made the change in our community. 